Welcome to the presentation for how to machine and measure a brake drum with our brake lathe. And the first thing to do is that we want to know what our maximum diameter is for allowable machining to be safe. It's 9.980. So we write down our maximum, which is 9.980. But we have to figure out where we're going to start from. We have, we have four different choices to go with. 9, 9.25, 9.50, 9.750. We want, and where these numbers come from are with our gauge. As you can see, we have our pre-drilled holes here which are calculated so that we can line up with our, our measurements being either 9, 9.25, 9.50, or 9.750 and which, which can be done with these lines in here, which we'll, go, we'll give you a good shot of that. So we will loosen this off, and you can see that it lines up with our self-aligning pin, which will always line up into one of these positions. So we're at the nine here, and there's nine two five, nine five zero, and 9.750. So we want that 9.750 because it's the number just below the 0.9, the 9.980. So we're going to set that up right now. And you will actually see how this, uh, this will line up itself. See, there we are. It's actually in, in position now. We can tighten it up. But before we get into measuring anything, we got to make sure that nobody before us has moved this part here. If they have, then this will be all out and our measurements will be wrong. So we make sure that it has not moved away from the chamfer position here. If it has, readjust uh, re it. Since we decide to choose the number that is below, since this one here is 9.980, so we chose the 9.750. Now if this number here was 9.9680, we would choose the number that is below it, which would be, which would be 9.500. Now, if this number here was at 9.375, then we would choose a 9.250 being just below. So now we are ready to be able to check the measurements of our drum. So first things first, we want to push in our, our plunger so that it fits in nicely and in here. And then we want to move our tool around to find the highest number. And that is being 0 0.220. So first off, we're gonna write down our starting point of 9.750. We have one number of 0 0.220, but we have to also check 180 degrees from this position to know if our drum is warped or is oval or not. So we're going to do that right now. Push the plunger in, let it slide in nicely. And we're going to check this position now. 180 degrees apart. And this one here is, a, once again, 0 0.220. So now we have to do a small amount of math to find out if we are in our, max, if we are in our maximum tolerance. So we're going to add our 0.220 to our 9.75 starting point. So we have a zero, a seven, and a 9.9. So we are still within machining tolerance. To machine our brake lathe, our brake drum, we are gonna use the Amco brake lathe. The safety tips behind this are safety glasses on, no rings on your hands, and uh, sleeves up, and uh, you want to tie back your long hair. Before we can set up anything, we have to make sure that our drum is clean. Our surfaces are clean. This surface here is clean, as well as here. So what we're going to use is our scraper. But making, making sure that our hand is behind the cutting edge. We'll hold the position. And we are cleaning this so that there is no rust deposits on here. So just so that when you put this in, in, into machining position, it won't throw it out by a 10, 10, 20 thou, which will ruin your machine job. <laughs> you can see this one's really nice and clean. 
We have our chuck, our mounting chuck, and uh, for this side here is for larger holes, as we have our tightening here, and on this side, the opposite side, are for our smaller holes, our smaller vehicles and our larger vehicles. Okay, so we are going to mount our chuck onto this surface here, but first we want to find our arrow for which, which tightening mechanism we need to use for that side. And this here it is here, so we're going to put this into place. And we tighten, tightening is counterclockwise. Okay, as we tighten, we want to make sure that we have our hand over top pressing down on our chuck to make sure that it sits, rests flat or else that will also throw your cut out. And here we are, nice and tight. Okay, we have four of our spacer cups. And what we have to do is find the one that best suits the inside of here. Because we do not want any of this touching into here because that will not be right. So we also must place the recessed end in first so that it clears here. If you mount this in incorrectly, as so, you will push it off. Since we've found our right size, just turn it around, put it in properly, check to see how it is. This one here we know is good, but as you can see, this one is much too small. The bigger the spacer, the better it is because more that you have more surface touching, which makes your setup that much more strong. So our first step for mounting the brake drum is to grab our spacer, making sure that our recess is facing out. Now it's time for us to mount our brake drum. Take into account that it is heavy, we're gonna use both our hands, we're gonna bend our knees, make sure keeping our back straight, we're gonna lift and mount. So here we are, keeping it close to our body. And yes, the drum goes in first. And when you mount, you make sure that this side jaws here are not scraping or touching the shaft. Now it's time for us to fat tighten the, our drum into position. So what we need first is our clutch. So if anything happens within the machine that this stalls out, this will spin, saving all equipment. And then we also have a special nut. As you can see, one side is washer and the other side is threads. These threads come to about half of the nut, to about here. Now it's time for, to select our spacings, our spacer so that we can get our nut in and tighten everything together. So first, we can start with our clutch. Then we can find some spacers that will bring us out to the right, uh, right distance. There, and there. Noticing that, so now we are ready to tighten up our, our, our attachments here. So we're gonna use this side because we do have enough distance. We're going to make sure that we turn left because it is a left-handed thread. Snug it with your hands, grab your wrench, give it a good tighten. This does not tighten, but this does. And as you use your wrench, make sure that you put it on the opposite side of your hanging washers so that you do not hit those. Once we have mounted our, dr our drum, we now need to put on our, our rubber band so that it dampens the, the vibration while we are machining our drum. And it can be a little bit tough. But one thing to make sure is that this is facing towards the inside when you wrap. Here we are. We'll wrap our band around. Nice and tight as possible. Find one of our little lock, our little latch holes here, right here. Pop it in. Like I said, it's a little tough to do. And now we're set. Our next step is to mount our boring bar. Things first. We want to blow our mating clear uh, areas clean. Make 
make sure there's no grit, grit or crud on there. Take a look at the other side, same thing, nice and clean. Now we can install this. Same for this. It's nice to be able to use a rag as well. And now we can get this ready for positioning. They're just positioning right now. So I just want to make sure that it's not going to fall out. And make sure that everything is in the proper order. And we'll, we'll put our nut in and we'll just leave it a little loose so that we can make our adjustments. Before we can set our bar, we have to make sure that we are not, we're not machining our drum far out on our latitude because it will cause a lot of chatter and it will ruin your finish. Okay, the distance that we are talking about, about being too far away, will increase your distance out of your bar. This is not safe. This will cause chatter and may damage your machine. Okay, we wind, we wind our drum back clockwise until we come to the stop. As soon as it stops, we stop. So now, it stopped. We turn back five turns, center it, and so that we have enough distance for machining. While we adjust and move our hand wheels, we must make sure that our locks are unlocked or else we will damage our hand wheels and we will not be able to move into positions that we'd like. This lock here controls the longitude, so the movement this way and this way. And this lock here controls the movement of this in this direction that way, our, our latitude. As you can see, when we are doing our preliminary settings, both of these locks should be loose. Now it's time for us to set our bar. First, we want to wind it all the way in. So it stops, stops, and then we want to wind it back out at least five turns. Three, four, and five. Next step is to set our cutter here into halfway distance of our drum. And then we're going to do that right now by just, as you can see, everything is loose for a reason. And we are now about halfway into our drum. Our next step is to make sure that we can travel in and out without rubbing. All the way in. All the way out. Before you start this machine, you want to make sure you're not standing in front of the line of the belt. This can fall off and it may hurt you. Our next step will be to scratch. So we're, we're, at, uh, we're finding our zero position now. We're where our cutter meets the, the workpiece. we have a hundred percent touching. So now we can loosen off our knob here. Make sure we hold here so that when we spin to zero our graduated collar that our hand lever does not move. And there we are, zero. Now it's time for us to travel all the way in. There we are, all the way in. Now we can set our cut, usually about two to three thou. Cut is set for three thou. Now we can lock our lock nut here to make sure we do not travel in any direction this way. Now it's time to explain our feeds. Normally when you machine a drum, you would like to use a two for the speed and, that, and as it comes across, if you hear that it's not cutting 100%, then you can speed it up to a 20. 20 is only meant for roughing and get through the material quickly. You always want to finish with two. And now if you finish at 20, you will leave threads inside your drum, which is not very good because what happens is that your drum starts here and it will follow the threads and it will the threads will pull your shoes out 
and then they will snap back in making that loud noise that you hear. Now it's time for us to actually set, the, to, to set this machine in motion. First things first, I want to double check to make sure this is locked and that this is unlocked. Perfect. Now we are ready to engage our feet, which is this lever right here. Forward for drum. As you can see, it's been marked. Rotor is in the opposite direction. So here we are. And here we go. Okay, now if you hear it skipping, you can increase the feed to get out of the cut, and then you will have to go back in and recut at two. Now never stop the machine inside a cut. Always let it finish its cut. Then you can shut the machine down and clean it up and put everything back in its rightful spot.